Hello friends, Alan here with another bundle of Studio One tips. Studio One is one of the most good-looking DAWs out there. Unfortunately, that beauty comes with a trade-off that it's not always easy to find things and they are not really discoverable. Additionally, we have some plugins that do actually way more than their name suggests, but if you don't know how to find what you're looking for, you will not be able to find it just by the name of the plugin. So in this video, I wanted to share 10 gems of uh, hidden features that are not like something very special or very advanced, but just something that's not on the surface. And if you are an experienced Studio One user, you probably know most or all of them. But I think everyone will find one of two things here that will be helpful and things that you didn't know before or that things that you forget. You know that field in your transport bar where you can change your song's tempo? Yeah, you double click on it and you enter the new number. You can also single click on it and drag your mouse up or down to change the value. You can also nod your head to the music you imagine in it. And on every note, click on that word that says tempo right below the number. And with just four clicks, you can set the tempo of your track to the exact tempo you imagined. If you have one of the Presonus' Atom controllers, there is a way to tap the tempo on the controller itself in a more convenient way than just clicking with the mouse. And speaking of Atom SQ, check out my review of it by clicking the link that should appear in the corner right now. Or find the link in the description below. While we are in the transport area, try right-clicking the stop button. Here you can enable or disable this return to start on stop function. When it's checked, when you play through your track and hit stop, the playhead returns to where it's to start. This is useful when writing or refining a part. On the other hand, when you are going through a more defined track and are looking for places to improve, it would be very annoying to find the place that needs work, press stop and everything jumps back to the beginning. For this scenario, you better have that function unchecked. Speaking of things you wouldn't think you can click, let me introduce you to the track number. Yes, that inconspicuous number in the top left corner of every track or at the bottom of every mixer channel. Click on it and the respective channel's effect track opens. This is a quick way to access your effects without having to go through the track inspector or mixer. Don't have a MIDI controller? Not a huge deal. Just hit caps lock on your computer keyboard and QWERTY keyboard controller emulation opens. You can now play your instrument with your computer keys. In some occasions, I've seen this not working right out of the box. Hopefully, this is not an issue in the current version of Studio One, but if this doesn't work for you, you may need to add the QWERTY controller manually. Go to Studio One, Options, External Devices, click Add, and under Personas, find QWERTY keyboard. Click OK, and it should work now. Creating strummed chords was added to Studio One in version 5.5. 
It is both quite easy to do, but also pretty much undiscoverable. To convert your straight chord to a strummed chord, you select all the notes and start dragging. And importantly, only then press Ctrl Alt on Windows or Command uh, plus Option on the Mac. Whichever note was right under your cursor, when you started dragging, will go the furthest in a strum, and the other notes will move relative to it. Make sure to disable snapping to grid for final control. And if you want to learn the trick on improving the musicality of those strums, I have a video on that here. You can find the link below in the description. So let's switch gears a bit and talk about hidden features in Stock Studio One plugins. Xtrem is a tremolo plugin, as the name suggests. While it doesn't have a lot of controls, it has a toggle button that switches it from tremolo mode to auto panning mode. And just like that, you have your Autopan plugin in Studio One, even though it was impossible to find it by name. Many electronic music producers use tools like LFO tool, Cable Guys Volume Shaper, or Nicky Romero Cake Start to create this four uh, side chaining pumping effect. And while those tools give you greater precision and other features, you can get pretty much the same general effect with XTREM. Just switch it to the 16 steps LFO type, and you can draw the shape similar to what you'd do with those third party tools. And if you switch the LFO type to the next one called 16 gates, you can do what those transgate plugins do. Studio One doesn't have a plugin named Filter, but you can obviously do your low pass, high pass, and other filtering using its great Pro EQ plugin. But if that looks a bit overwhelming for a simple low pass, you can also use another stock plugin. At first, it managed to deceive me by the auto prefix, but auto filter doesn't have to use the auto part. You can just disable the effect of its built-in LFO by control clicking on it and you get a collection of static filter emulations for your filtering needs. I've talked more about filtering in Studio One in this video. Starting with Studio One version 6, the capabilities of the binaural pan plugin are now built in into the mixer's channel's panning controls. Just double click on the panning control and you can switch to binaural mode. And now you can turn the width knob all the way down to turn a stereo signal into mono. You can use this either for creative purposes or just to check how a part of your mix sounds in mono. The binaural pan plugin contains a mono button, which is basically a shortcut for turning that width knob down all the way. So it's kind of redundant on the whole channel, but it can still be useful in more intricate plugin chains when you split the signal and want to have one path to be mono for some reason.
This one is not a very super hidden thing, but I personally discovered it by accident, so maybe you don't know about it either. The thing is, that if you drag a sample on top of a pad in Impact XT, and hold control on Windows or Common on Mac, instead of replacing the sample, it will add this sample to the one already present on that pad. And then you can select a behavior for this stack of samples. It can either play them at random or play a different sample depending on velocity. You can adjust velocity ranges by dragging those bars at the top. Or you can just stack two or more samples on top of each other. And for example, beef up your kick by layering one with snappier attack with one uh, with a fat tail. This feature is a bit limited as you can't combine those modes, which prevents you from creating a super realistic sounding acoustic drum kit imitation. But I made an attempt at doing that using multiple Impact XTs and some other tricks. You can watch the video here or click a link in the description below. So that's it for this video. Have you seen anything that you didn't know before? If so, please let me know in the comments and it would be quite appropriate for you to hit that like button. And if you haven't seen anything that you didn't know before, this means that you are an experienced Studio One user and you can congratulate yourself by clicking that thumbs up button. What are the, some of the other things that you discovered in Studio One that took a while for you to find out that they are even there? Let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe to my channel to get notified about future Studio One tips. And with that, thank you and see you next time.